church down here in the country this morning and we pray that you are just in that right place if you're not there you ought to just pray with deacon jenkins while he's praying you ought to be praying yourself lord say, i want to be in church today i know i'm sitting in a pew but i want to be in church i know i'm in my kitchen i know i'm in my bedroom but i want to be in church today is there anybody want to be in church today come on come on you ought to want you didn't drive all the way out here not to have a little church Amen. Amen. God bless you. Deacon Jenkins. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thine holy name. Father God, we come before you this morning, questions are with thanksgiving on our tongue. Thanking you, Father God, for allowing us to see another day. Father, for you watched over us last night as we sat and slumbered. And you woke us up this morning, Father, in our right minds and with the use of our limbs. And we just want to say thank you this morning. Thank you, Father, for making a way for us all week long. Father God, for we run into some trials and tribulations. Father, the things that we didn't have no control over. But we realize that you have control over all. And we want to say thank you for bringing us through. Now, Father God, as we are gathered together one more time. Father, we thank you for allowing us, allowing us, Father God, to be able to praise your holy name. So, Father God, we know that you are here, but we just want to invite you ourselves into your sanctuary. Father God, for we know that when you are in the midst, Father God, everything is going to be all right. So, Father, we want you to know, Father, that you are invited in this place. Father, it was you that made a way for us to get here ourselves. 
And now, Father, as we prepare to go through this morning service, first of all, Father, we ask, Father God, that you will forgive us of the wrong that we have done, Father. Father, forgive us for things we did wrong in our thoughts and in our deeds. Father God, forgive us in the name of your only begotten Son. We ask, Father. And then, Father God, we ask that you continue to bless us. Bless us in the areas that you know that we stand in the need of. Father God, for we know that there's those that are sick among us. Those that are dealing with bereavement. Father, there are those that are incarcerated. Father God, there are those that are dealing with financial issues. Father, but whatever the problem is, I know that you are able to handle it. So, Father, I come praying, Father, that your will be done. Your will be done, Father. And, Father God, not only that, Father, I pray, Father, that as we strive to do your will, that you will grant us what we need, Father. Father God, that for our obedience to the Holy Spirit, our comforter, our guide, the one that brings back to remembrance your promises that you made to us. Father, we come this morning in a humble manner, seeking your divine deliverance from all sinful and evil things that is going on. Asking, Father God, that you be with our leaders from the head of the house to the head of this nation. Father, touch their minds, touch their hearts in the way that only you can. Father, but we know that you can make a difference in the life of all mankind. So touch, Father God. Father God, let your will be done. And we your people. Guide us and lead us in the way that you will have us to go. And when, Father, we have done all that you would have us to do on this side, we ask that you, Father God, will take us to your home on high. That home not made by man's hand, but eternal in the heavens. Father, where we will have peace and joy forevermore. Father, for we stand in the need. We stand in the need. And Father God, and we know that you were able to supply all our needs. So we come to you this morning praying that your will be done and we your people. And Father God, I ask that those here that not only hear that, but those that can hear the sound of my voice, I pray that we open our minds and our hearts to receive your word this morning. For I know that there's a word for each and every one of us. It may not be the same thing, but Father God, I know it's something that can be applied to our lives that can help us to get through today, to get through tomorrow. If we just, Father God, adhere to what thus says the Lord. So Father, we ask that you use the pastor this morning as he brings forth your word. Father, use him as your instrument and the deliverance of your word, Father, that we all may get something, that we all realize that it is you that is speaking through him and not him himself. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, family. Good morning, family. This morning, we just want to continue to give God those praises. We know y'all started worshiping at home, but this morning, we just want to go ahead and continue to thank God, bless his name, and lift him up. Just wanna pray. 
the first Sunday in September. Does anybody know what that is? What is it? Amen. On September the 4th, Noah's Ark Missionary Baptist Church will be celebrating 158 years. And I think that is something to, to be praised and thankful of. So, our colors for the anniversary will be purple, white, and silver. But guess what? If you don't have those colors, you're still more than welcome to come out and worship and praise his holy name and celebrate the Noah's Ark Missionary Baptist Church for 158 years. Amen? What we'll, uh, we'll kick off the, the weekend on September the 3rd. We're going to be having a Golden Harvest food drive. And we're asking uh, those that are available to please come out. It's going to be held at Divided, Divided Georgia, excuse me, at the City Hall Community Park. The time will be 9 a.m. till 11 a.m. It's free. Come out, pull your vehicle up. We're going to load you up with some groceries the day before we come out and give the Lord some praise and worship. Amen? We're also asking that for those that can, make a sacrificial offering of $158. Amen. Say it again. Amen. We will, we will be having a serving of food. We know we're in a pandemic, so guess what? We will be serving food outside. You don't have to worry about the heat because you will be covered. When the, the Lord makes a way for us to, to come out and praise and worship his holy name, there will be tents set up outside so you can come sit out you can fellowship, have a good time. And guess what, church? Facebook land, we're going to have a very special guest to come bring us the word. The retired pastor of the Beulah Grove Baptist Church, the Reverend Dr. Sam Davis, will be coming out and bringing us a word from the Lord that morning. Amen? So please, we're also going to have a, the anointed angels, a special uh, group out of the South Carolina area. They're going to come and worship through music with us. So please, please, please share the word. If you don't have a flyer, reach out to myself or anyone in the tribe of Benjamin, and we will get you a flyer. Please share it. We welcome you. We welcome you. We welcome you. Thank you.
the Lord, everybody. Amen. How many of you guys, it sounds like you guys are excited about that 158th anniversary. Uh, I hear some excitement in the air. Uh, amen. Amen. We thank Deacon Lynch for bringing us up to date. There are a few other little tags on to that. Uh, we told you last week there's a family tree that's being planned uh, uh, for the history of the church that's going to be hung out in the, in the foyer. If you make sure your family name is signed up, there's a sign-up sheet out there now. Make sure you have your family's surname. Amen. The last name is what we're looking for of families in, in the church. Amen. If there's some disconnect, if there's two Howard families in here that's not connected to each other, that means there ought to be two Howard leaves up there. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. If you did, But if you got some connection, there should be only one Howard. Praise the Lord. Uh, amen. That's that's one. So that family tree, that's another little tag. There's another little basket out there in the foyer. Uh, that It says memory. What is your fondest memory of your connection with Noah's Ark? Uh, maybe it was with a person, somebody you met, somebody who got you the, the, uh, to be a part of the church. Write that memory down. We're going to put them in a scrapbook and that you'll be able to view those things. So just think of a memory, just one. Don't tell the whole story. It's only a little piece of paper. So just fill that out and make sure you kind of get that. And that, that ought to be real exciting for other folk to know what excited you, that got you connected. Maybe I ought to tell, tell the story of what got me connected. A, a phone call from Deacon Leroy Club at 11.30 on a Sunday night, the third Sunday in September, 1976. Praise the Lord. A night I'll never forget. <laughs> Praise the Lord. If I if I remember correctly, he might have said, "Us want you to be our pastor." <laughs> Maybe I ought to put that on our memory. Y'all can get that in, in the scrapbook. But anything like that that can kind of help us. Just fun. Also give a connect. No, no, no weeping and moaning about who died and all that. We're just just upbeat stuff. All right. Great memories. Make sure you do that as well. 
And if you're in a ministry, a tribe, or uh, you're part of the church that's a list outside for what we call in our cleanup campaign, uh, we're asking the members to do that. We don't, for, for, listen, for 16 years, we've not had a janitorial service. Members have taken care of this, and thank, I want to thank you guys for doing what you're supposed to do. And so let's keep that going. There's a list outside uh, with the, your area, your ministry, your tribe, your uh, whatever you're connected with, telling you what we want, you want you to do to make sure we tidy up and be looking good, smelling good for the church and for the church anniversary. Amen. So let's make sure we get that done. We're right in the, we're approaching, I, I'm almost tired of them already, the commercials. Uh, it, we're in the voting season. Amen. We're getting ready to vote in November. And boy, we I don't know if, if, if those commercials keep going like they're going now. We're not gonna see we're not gonna see our story. Amen. They're gonna cut out the edge of night and I mean all that stuff. It's commercial back to back, back to back, back to back uh, commercials. So listen, but it's serious. Uh, they're doing this because this is a serious election. Uh, Georgia is on the national map. Money is coming from everywhere trying to make sure they can control Georgia. But guess who can make a decision? Who, who can help them make that decision? Noah's Ark. Amen. So we want to make sure every member of our church is registered to vote. Uh, I'm a part of a little group now called Faith uh, Faith Works. It's nonpartisan. It ain't campaigning for nobody. Just making sure that the people we know are registered to vote. Listen, y'all got to register and you got to vote. Uh, uh, and I, we're suggesting to you that uh, you get there and go early vote. Go in person. Because there's a lot of shenanigans going on. Amen. A lot of shenanigans going on. Secretaries of State spend being manipulated and that kind of thing. But what they can manipulate is when you put your own ballot in that machine. Uh, if you just can't do that, then we can do the absentee ballot. But we're encouraging that you do early, plan on early voting. Amen. Plan on doing that. Uh, Y'all know we can't, I can't, I can't endorse nobody from the pulpit. I, that's not, that's not the right thing to do. But I got some paperwork in my car now where a evangelical organization they sent me, me something they sent something to Noah's Ark I guess they thought it was a white church and, and telling us who to vote for but they told us we can't say nothing amen but I, so I can't tell y'all we don't vote for people who don't know, people who lie all the time I mean when we can, when we see their lies when they when they say they work for the FBI we can't vote for folks like I can't. I can't call no names though. I can't. I can't call no names. But my my grandmama said, "You tell one lie, you tell another one." Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm through with that. Y'all make sure we get ready to vote. <laughs> Listen, our church has been blessed with givers, uh, folk who don't mind giving of their finances, and I just want to say thank you for that. And then and those who have been a little hesitant, a little not on top of it. Listen, there are so many ways you can do that. Five, five or six ways you can give to our church. You can do Givelify.com. Many of you have been doing that. Uh, you can also do the cash app, that dollar sign, NAMDC 4466. You can do that. You can put it in the mail. You can drop it in the box. Listen, you can send it to the post office. Or you can call some. I got one member that has, for two and a half years, I've had to pick, a, pick up their, their tithes twice a month. And they've done that consistently for two and a half years. And I'm, you tell me we are not blessed with good people here at our church. And I thank God for you. There again, if you have been a little slack, we understand it's kind of hard to stay on target. But listen, you can always catch up. You can always jump on board. So we thank you for thank you for being a part of that. Doing all of that as well. It's good to be here. It's good to see everybody. Let's be in prayer for those that are sick among us. Those that are going through situations and circumstances amen we pray for we pray for them amen we pray for them daily and hopefully you will be doing the you do the same thing as we move along our sermon text today is our sermon text comes from, from the uh, book of acts the acts according to the apostles and <clears throat> you can turn to acts chapter 17 
Acts chapter 17. Praise the Lord. Say that thing. chapter 17 beginning with verse number 10 says this that very night the believers sent Paul and Silas to Berea when they arrived there they went to the Jewish synagogue and the people of Berea were more open minded than those in Thessalonica and they listened eagerly to Paul's message they searched the scriptures day after day to see if Paul and Silas were teaching the truth as a result, many Jews believed, as did many of the prominent Greek women and men. But when some Jews in Thessalonica learned that Paul was preaching the word of God in Berea, they went there to stir up trouble. The believers acted at once, sending Paul on the coast, while Silas and Timothy remained behind. Those escorting Paul went with him all the way to Athens. Then they returned to Berea with instructions for Silas and Timothy to hurry and join Paul. Amen. I want to use the text, and I just want to talk about something simple. I want to talk about the word church. The word church. God, we thank you now for the preaching moment. Pray, God, now that you would bless this vessel, this vessel of clay. Use us now, God, for your glory. We thank you for the word that's already been blessed. But now, God, our prayers that it will come alive in this room and in this virtual congregation. It will come alive even in this preacher. God, and we know that can happen by the undergirding of your Holy Spirit, the reminding of us of your grace. And God, the thanksgiving that we have in our hearts for new mercy. Bless us now for the preaching moment by letting the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, God, let it be acceptable in your sight. You are my strength and my redeemer. It's in Jesus' name I do pray. Amen. Amen. I'm actually starting a series for these next three weeks. And I want to talk, I want to just talk about celebrating the church celebrating the church today's tag would be the word church the word church that that's what i want to look at the church the church the church what is the church uh the church is uh our charter that we have is naturally the bible the foundation of the church is the cross of calvary uh, the power of the church is the cross and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The church has an, adva an advantage that others don't have because the church has the advantage or uh, has the privilege of their prayers being answered. The church, the church, listen, the church, uh, the church is, it's, uh, it, it, it's the members of the church. It's not bricks and mortar. Uh, the church is the saints and not the steeple. The church, the church is the people, it's not the pulpit, the pool, or the pews. The church, the church is made up of, of a group of sanctified folk. It's those folk who have accepted their election and confessed Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of their lives. That's the church. That's the church. That's the church. And in the Bible, especially when you look at the book of Revelations, the book of Revelations, there are seven prominent churches, identifiable churches uh, of Asia Minor. Y'all know those churches, the Ephesus, Smyrna, per Pergamum, 
Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea, those named identified churches in, in the book of Revelations, those churches are recognized. Watch this. They are recognized and given commendations as well as criticisms. Let me say that again. They, they were recognized, but they were given commendations for their good, for the good that they were doing, but they were also criticized for some things that they may have been, been doing wrong. That, that, their good characteristics were applauded, but their faults were admonished. Uh, uh, and when you study the book of Acts, and listen, there are some names of some other churches in the, in the book of Acts that, 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 that uh, we call New Testament churches. We talk about them all the time, Macedonia, uh, Philippi, the church at Corinth, the church at Rome, and here's the church at, church at Thessalonica that I just mentioned earlier, the church at Colossae, the church at Galatia. There are churches throughout, throughout the book of Acts, and all of them are popular, all of them are proficient churches, but they have their own, every church has their own traits, their own characteristics, both, listen, both positive and negative. Every church has, uh, has, some, has uh, some strong points and some weak points, and I'll get to that in a minute. So, so as we head to this 158th anniversary of the Noah's Ark Missionary Baptist Church, I wanted to just look at some of these churches, and, and I want to look at them, and, and hopefully it will help us and encourage us to be the church that God wants us to be. Or maybe I say it like this, to continue to be the church that God will have us to be. And, and when you think about that, when you think about the church, when you think about the church, and before I get to those churches over in the book of Revelation or any other popular churches over in the book of Acts, uh, I, I wanted to, today I wanted to take a look and a peek at a model church that's rarely taught in, the, in, in Sunday school, rarely preached about uh, from the pulpit. But the, it's, a, it's, a, it's a model church found in the book of Acts chapter 17, and it's called the Berearian Church. It's called the Berearian Church, and, and if you Google Berearian Churches, you'll find that, that, that there are a whole lot of modern churches, even in our time, that, are, that are na have named themselves the Berearian Congregation. There's one in almost every state that have, have named themselves from this powerful church in the Bible in Acts chapter 17. In our area, there's one in Augusta on Augusta Continental called Augusta Continental Hall. It's the Berearian Baptist Church over in Hepsiba, Georgia. There's one at 2385 uh, uh, Highway 88 in Hepsiba. Berearian churches are all around us. The name of the church is there. That's the name on the sign that they've given themselves. But, but let me suggest to you that there are no bad churches. If they are teaching and preaching Jesus, there are no bad churches. Uh, they may have some bad traditions, some bad nuances, some bad manners, and some bad attitudes. But there ain't no bad church as long as what Paul told the church at Philippi, at Philippi as long as the gospel is being preached. He said that and folk are getting saved and coming to Christ. The rest of that, we can work on the rest of that. And I wanted to preach my little sermon to, to encourage the church of God, this Noah's Ark Baptist Church, and maybe those that are watching, that, that we should celebrate our strengths, but we also ought to work on our weaknesses. Remember now, I'm not talking about a, a leak in the roof. I'm not talking about a broken window. I'm not talking about something, a, a hole in the carpet. I'm talking about the, I, that's, that's, that's not a weakness. I'm talking about, remember I said the church are those of us in the pews. Those, it's the people. It's the saints of God. So, so we need to work on our strengths, both collectively, collectively corporately, and individually. If we're going to be the church that God can use, if we're going to be the church that God wants, and we, 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 need to, we, need to, we need to magnify our strengths. But don't forget that all of us, let me, let me just take a panoramic view, all of us, all of us have some weaknesses that we need to work on. I know you're perfect. I know you got everything on you're supposed to have on today. Hair in the right place. Right color pantyhose. I didn't, I didn't want to say it, but I know you got all that right. But there are some weaknesses in the armor. All of us got some stuff we need to work on personally. 
there's some stuff we need to work on first. So don't, don't get yourself above anybody, as in the, both individually and as the Noah's Ark uh, corporate body of believers. We're not better than anybody else. If they ain't got but two and a half members, they, God still look at them just like he looks at us. Mm. I, I, I wanted to talk about that because when we look at these churches, hopefully we'll, we'll see ourselves and we'll see our strengths see our weaknesses, and we'll work on our weaknesses, but we'll, we'll at least magnify our strength. Listen, Paul is on his second missionary journey. He, he's preaching the full gospel of Jesus Christ. He's preaching the, from the virgin birth to the resurrection of, 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 of Jesus Christ, all the way to the second coming of Jesus Christ. He's preaching the triuneship of God. He's preaching God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. He's preaching all of this as he moves around prior to getting to Berea and our text, Paul has been run out of Philippi simply for preaching the gospel. He's been run out of the, run out of the city because he's preaching the gospel. Immediately before our text, he's already he's been run out of Thessalonica simply for preaching the whole gospel of Jesus Christ. Now these are Jews, these are church folk that are that are messing with him simply because he was preaching the whole gospel of Jesus Christ. He was preaching the full gospel of Jesus. They were all right with, Je with you know, God the Father, God, and, 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 and God the Son. But then when they got to that resurrection piece, when they got to that Holy Spirit piece, they were having a little problems with that. They all right, he was all right being a prophet. But when he became the Messiah, that was trouble for them. These are, these are folk whose name was on the roll at the church that had a problem with him being the Messiah. And, and here he is, he's, here he is, and so he, he leaves Thessalonica, or uh, he leaves in the middle of the night, he, along with uh, his sidekick Silas, and they, are, they, and they, take, a, uh, they take a back road, uh, rather, than, rather, than taking, rather than taking 278 uh, Highway uh, 80 or uh, 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 I-20, they came down 305 and came to Highway 80. They didn't go down the main road called Ignatia Way. They didn't take the main road. They took a back road and ended up in this little city called Berea. Uh, and, and as was Paul's custom, the first place he stopped was at 4466. <laughs> the first place he stops is the synagogue. He, the first place he visits is the church. That's what he did every time he went to a city. And, and, he, and, and, and the Bible says, according to what Luke records, says that when he went to the church, what he did was he reasoned with them. In other words, he, he reasoned with them and, and taught the word of God, preached the word of God. And he did that. He, he says, uh, and, and he, he first, he, uh, he preached and taught according to the scriptures. Uh, and and then, then he taught this, and this is what they had problems with. That they had problems with that he taught the fact that 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 they that that uh, Christ would have to suffer and rise from the dead, that didn't make no sense to them, and that don't make uh, there's some modern there's some modernists now there's some Gen Xs now that don't make no sense to them because why would God have to suffer if He's God? But they don't understand He had to suffer not for Himself. I, I need to hear something from every section. He He didn't have to suffer for Himself. He suffered for all of us. And that don't make no sense because we don't want to suffer for nobody. That ain't human. That ain't, that ain't, that ain't the way it goes. No, nobody want to suffer for somebody else. So, so he, they, he tells them that, that, and that, 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 that he was, in fact, the Messiah, and that messed with them. But that, that messed the church folk up. And then, but the, and the Bible says some of the Jews were won over as were, as were some of the God-fearing people and, and some of the prominent women. He said, but the more, in, watch this, the more influential members of the community got jealous. The rich folk, the high and the mighty, they got upset and jealous because Paul and Silas were having success in preaching the gospel. Somebody was hearing it, and folk were getting saved. Listen, everybody ain't happy when the, your church is successful. Everybody ain't happy when you are successful. Everybody ain't happy with that kind of stuff. There are some jealous folk around. And they, but, but listen, they got, and so they get together, these influential people, they get together and plan this little riot. 
and they get, when they got some bad character, they, they round it up to carry out their little plan so they could accuse the Christians, uh, including the fellow that Paul them would stand with. His name was Jason, including them, to him. They, they, they wanted to accuse them so they could arrest them. But so when they get to Jason's house, uh, the people had heard about the plan. God had, uh, the Holy Spirit had revealed it, and Paul and Silas leaves. So when they get to Jason's house, uh, Jason, uh, they, they said, well, Jason, you, we got to arrest you because they were with you. And, they, and you are housing some folk that are turning the world upside down. Don't miss that. Listen, these are the, the enemies accusing Paul and Silas of preaching the gospel, teaching the gospel, and turning the world upside down. In other words, they, are being, they literally are being prophetic because they are saying what Paul and Silas want them to say. Because that was their plan to turn the world upside down with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Noah's Ark, can I tell you that's what God's plan is for us? To turn this community, to turn this city, to turn this state, to turn this world upside down. But you got to preach the gospel. You got to teach the gospel. You got to draw men unto Christ. The, even the enemy recognize it when you are doing the right thing. Listen, they, they, so, 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 so they get to this place called Berea. They go out of their way down this little city off the beaten path uh, road to get down to Berea. And, and listen, what we see in the text are some special qualities of a special church that I wanted to share with you today. What was so special about Berea? What was so special about this church that they are archived in the holy canon that we call the Bible? But, but a bigger question, a bigger question is what can we learn and emulate that will make us a better church for the next 158 years? You got to look at the text. You got to look at the text. Just in these five verses, 70, uh, 10, through, uh, 10 through 15 in chapter 17. Now listen, they, 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 they distributed, they exhibited uh, some positive characteristics that marked how they responded to the gospel message. So this is, listen, listen, if I can tell you, this is more about not them hearing it, but it's more about how they respond to it. A lot of us hear it on Sunday, or hear it on Wednesday, hear it on Sunday morning, well, uh, in, in Sunday school, but the question is how do you respond to it after you leave the doors, after you leave the campus, after you leave the park? How do you respond to it? That's, that's what we see. That's what, and what, listen, here, here, here's the first th thing they say about it. Uh, the, 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 the response of, how, of what we see about this church is that one, one of the powerful traits is that he says they were more noble than the others. <laughs> they were more noble than the others. That's, that's right. That's the King James Version. And, and what, what the New Living Translation says, they received the word with all readiness of mind. King James says they were more noble-minded than those in Thessalonica. Uh, listen, wh why were they considered to be noble? Because normal idea, when you think about nobility, you think it's being born in high cotton or born in royalty. You know, you, that, we think of those persons as being noble. But this idea of noble, uh, we know it in, in, even in the Bible, in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 26, it talks about pe people who are born in nobility like that. But listen, but, but what, this idea, what this idea was about this idea, no, noble is they were not being admired for their pedigree. They, they were not being admired for who their granddad and grandmama was. But, but th they, were, they were being admired for the high-minded way that they received and responded to the gospel. They were open-minded. That's what one text says. They were open-minded, and i get to that in a minute. They, 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 they were noble thinkers. They thought on a higher level than other folks, you know. And that's why I, I, I would say to the church today that you, when, you, when you hear sermons, when you hear Sunday school teachers, you got to think on a higher level because most of us think about who's saying it and where they come from and who their mama is rather than what they are saying. We have these presuppositions about the, about the mouthpiece that determines whether we hear what they are saying or not. Because if you saw me in the dollar paper this week, you wouldn't believe nothing I had to say today. Even though I was telling the truth from the Bible. 
It's called a presupposition. But what he says, the, the Thessalonians might have thought like that, but the Bereans would say, go on, go on and preach. I'm going to say amen. I'm going to sign on, uh, uh, but because I'm open-minded right now, I'm thinking on a higher level. Listen, they were not slaves to prejudice. They were, they were not biased. They were, they were ready to believe the gospel that Paul was preaching because uh, uh, he knew that they knew that it would possibly meet their spiritual needs. So, watch so what they did, they came and studied the evidences which, which the preacher opened and alleged what they talked about. And they did it with, with a predisposed faith in Jesus Christ. And here they are. Here, and, the, and, and the Bible says, the Bible says they were, the, the word they used in it, they were eager to hear the teaching of Paul and Silas. That's a trait. That's a trademark. That's a trademark. Everybody ain't eager to hear the word of God. I, I was in my office in a little while, and it was about, it was about, what, about quarter to ten, uh, five minutes to ten, ten minutes to ten, and I saw somebody flying through the parking lot. Zzz, I thought, what are they doing? And then I saw them running in the church because they was trying to get to Sunday, didn't want to miss Sunday school. They wanted to get there before it started. They were eager to get there. They wanted to hear what had to be. They, they probably didn't know who was teaching, but they were skinning wheels in the parking lot because they wanted to, they were eager to hear the word of God. I ain't, I ain't jumping on nobody. I ain't messing with nobody. But some folk get here five minutes before Bible study, before Sunday school over with, and still slow walk. I'm, making, I'm, I'm, I'm saying what's in the text. They were eager to hear the teaching and the preaching of the word. Y'all remember the old folk just said they couldn't wait to get to church? I mean, they'll they, they are, they are, they are, they are ride on the back. Well, I ain't seen this. I heard about it. They'll ride on the back of the wagon and have their shoes off. And then they'll start walking in the dust. And then they get to church and put on another pair of shoes. Eager. To hear the word of God. They couldn't wait to get the Bible said. They showed up at Sunday school. They, they listened to the word. They, they didn't get on Zoom late. They got there before time. Listen, that, that, and listen, and what their nobleness did, because they were noble-minded, it led to their openness and their obedience. He said the people of Berea were more open-minded than those in Thessalonica, and they listened eagerly to Paul's message. They listen eagerly to the word of God. Listen, we, we, we get out of church now at, at 1215. We used to get out at 115, 130. But folks still ain't satisfied because they because it's still too long. And Jesus says, if you can't just pray with me for one hour. What can I? What do you expect from me? So, so, so let me let me leave that. I'm, I'm getting messy. They they, 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 they are noble. They were noble minded. They were noble in, in pedigree. They were noble minded. Then I I, I I needed another end so y'all don't hold this against me. But for the second second observation that I see in this, they were nosy. No, not that nosy. They weren't that nosy. Not that not that nosy. They were nosy. Because the text says, and they search the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. They listened earnestly. They heard it earnestly. And, uh, but what they did was they conduct, conducted further research after they left church to make sure that what he said was true. Yeah, I told y'all, y'all remember Miss Maddie Kittles? Ms. Matter Kittles brought all those folk to church on that little van, that little Chevrolet van, uh, the, old, the old Sly and the Family Stone van. And, 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 and she bring all the, and I, I once asked Ms. Matter Kittles, I said, what brought you, you all all the way from Louisville to Noah's Ark? And she said, I heard you say one time I was here, I heard you say, don't believe what I say, go read it for yourself. She said, when she heard that, she said, that's the church I need to be at. <laughs> And I'm trying to tell y'all now, y'all be, y'all, 
go ahead and whatever I say up here, you ought to go back and search the scriptures and make sure I'm telling the truth. Because I could be reading from a funny book. I could be reading from Playboy. But they, they examined the scriptures. I said they were nosy. They went back to check it out. And they listened and they conducted this further, further research. Listen, and it led to many of the other Berrians to have faith in Jesus Christ as the Messiah. Now, this, this might seem kind of ordinary to y'all, but I wanted to teach this today because I, I want to see what this word church looked like because the word church gets into the word. The word church ain't worried about, even though we talk about church anniversary, we ain't worried about no church anniversary. Some of us already have spent more time on the church anniversary this year than we've already spent in the word. What the menu going to be? What color is going to be? What? Yep, yep. Who cooking the chicken? I don't eat dog meat. They going to be in a white meat? them to search. All they had, the scriptures, was Old Testament. Don't miss that. All they had was Old Testament, but they, they searched the scriptures to find out if Paul was preaching the truth. And see, some of y'all want to throw the Old Testament away. Talking about the Old Testament. We don't, we don't believe in the Old Testament. But, but, but I, like, I, like what, I like what the theologian Augustine said. It's like that he said, in the Old Testament, the New Testament is concealed. In the New Testament, the Old Testament is revealed. So anything you want to find out about the New Testament, you can go to the Old Testament. If you want to verify the Old Testament stuff, it's right there in the New Testament. Because the Bible is, a, is the inspired word of God, and it's, all, and it's because uh, he is, it is revealed in the New Testament, because without the Old Testament, we cannot understand the New Testament. And without the New Testament, we have an incomplete understanding of the Bible. All of Scripture. That's what the text says. The Bible says all scripture is inspired by God. You can't take none of it out. You can't pick what you want to pick and think that's going to make something. you got to understand. And, and, and I like what John said. John says it like this. this and now he doesn't talk to them about Jesus. And, and, and the name Jesus is not in the Old Testament. But he's in there. John says in the beginning. I need two people to shout. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. Who is the word? Jesus. You can't you, listen. So, so they, they, that, they had to be mighty. They had to have a noble mind to be able to search the scriptures, the Old Testament scriptures, and verify what the truth that, that Paul was preaching and teaching. So, so if you want to test, uh, if you want to test the sermon, if you want to test that those wise lips or the wise tongues that y'all talked about in, in, by, in Sunday school uh, this morning, you don't, don't, don't test it on the newspaper. Don't test it on, on, the, uh, on, on some, on some uh, extra biblical uh, material. Go to the Bible. Scripture verifies itself. Somebody said, well, well, Pastor, you, you, you got to I got to get, I don't, I got to get out, I got to get out of my Facebook time. I move. But so, he, here's one example. If you want to, if you want to talk about, if you want to talk about Jesus, look at Adam. Because Adam in Genesis was the first Adam. In the New Testament, Jesus is called the second Adam. So if they start talking about Jesus and Adam, then all the, all the Berrians had to do was go, go to Genesis. 
and then go to Corinthians and see where he's the second Adam. So Jesus is all throughout the Old Testament. I ain't got time to give y'all. I got a bunch of scriptures that I, I that even, even this healing is in the, in the Old Testament. Y'all remember Genesis 3.15? I will cause hostility between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring. He will strike your head and, and, and you will strike his heel. His ministry of healing and his hope is in the Old Testament. John says it like this. But when the people kept sinning, when the people keep on sinning, it shows that they belong to the devil who has been sinning since the beginning. But the Son of God came to destroy the works of the devil. Spiritual healing is all throughout the Bible. I got to get out of here because, listen, you, you got to understand, somebody said, well, what about that resurrection? That resurrection is in the Old Testament, just like, it, just like, just like it's in the New Testament. Y'all already know it. Isaiah talks about it. He was wounded for our transgression. Come on, that's, that's, res that, that's crucifixion. That's crucifixion. That's crucifixion. But, but, he, but he says he's in the Old Testament and the New Testament. And so they search the scriptures. So can I, if we're going to be a word church, we got to stop searching opinions and search scripture. Stop. And, and listen, I, 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 get, I, get, I get 15 or 20 devotionals every day. And a lot of them is just, you know, good stuff to read, motivational, but ain't no scripture. And we get excited when somebody say, you know, the best is yet to come. Your, your bill's going to be paid next week. Ain't no scripture. Search the scripture. Be nosy. Be nosy, be noble minded, be nosy. Let me get out. I, 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 I need my time, my Facebook time. But, but listen. But then here, here I, I got two more little issues I, I need to address. If the, if the word church is when we talk about the church anniversary and evaluating Noah's Ark and evaluating the congregation and knowing where I know what our strengths and our weaknesses are. Listen, what they did. The Berrians, these folk, they were protective of the word. Paul is out preaching and teaching, but all of a sudden those same mean folk, influential folk from Thessalon, from another city, came over to disrupt what was happening in Berea. And they knew that Paul was the main, was the senior pastor. Paul was the senior pastor. I don't know where that email came from. And, and, and he's the senior pastor, so they want to make sure that the senior pastor is protected. So they take the senior pastor and take him out of town before they get before the enemy gets there. They protected the word. But we're living in a time where there not only are we not protecting the senior pastor, we are assassinating the senior pastor. I ain't, I ain't talking to the folk in the room right here, but we got some visitors, we got some pastors on, that's watching on. on I ain't talking to y'all. But if y'all out there on Facebook and y'all y'all not a member of this church, y'all stop assassinating your pastor. I ain't talking to you. They, they don't do that over here. <laughs> they pr protect the word. He, he is the mouthpiece of God. And if he's, if he's in position over you, then you protect him while he's in that position. Because it's not, it's not him or her, it's what's in the book. They are not Jesus, but they are, they are Jesus' spokesperson. And when you put your mouth on the spokesperson, you put your mouth on Jesus. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm talking to people out there who are not in our church. I ain't talking nobody knows of. So they were protected. But here's, here's the reward right here. Here's the reward. Paul and Silas leaves. Paul, Paul left. Paul left. They slipped Paul out by night because they didn't want him to get hurt because he was the main, he was the senior pastor. He had the word that God, he was preaching this thing, and, but, and he had trained some other folks. But he leaves Silas and Timothy there in Berea. Here's the word, church. The word, church, 
never stops growing. There is not only examination and verification, there's continuation. So listen, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm through teaching. I'm through teaching. I might not even holler. I might just need some little, like, you know, some little opera music or something. But, but listen, just because the senior pastor is not there, or he gets off the scene, God forbid, he dies. That does not mean that the word church stopped growing. But there ought to be some Silas's and some Timothy's and some Timotheus and some Scythians. There's got to be somebody to carry the word on when that person has to depart from the scene. You got, you got to understand. You got to understand. So, so my, 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 my admonition to you as an individual, as an individual church, as a corporate church, is that we should never stop growing simply because one person disappears. I'm preaching better than y'all hollering. You got to understand because a lot of times, and, and God, God knows I've seen it over these past eight years as this little president thing I'm doing, the church falls apart. Because something happens to the leader. That means the word is not strong enough in the assembly. Because emotions take over rather than the word. I'm, I'm, I'm through preaching, I'm through preaching, I'm through preaching. But listen, don't stop growing. What was the primary problem? What was the primary problem with these, with these folks? Why the primary problem was, was, the, was that that that, that they, they, they did not believe in the resurrection. And can I tell y'all right now, if you don't believe in the resurrection, God bless you. Because if there is no resurrection, we might as well cancel the 158th anniversary. If, if there's no resurrection, Bible study needs to stop right now. You don't need to get on Zoom no more. If there is no resurrection, if there's no resurrection, we might as well shut down Christmas and the Christmas tree. If there is no resurrection, we ought to stop serving communion. We ought, if there's no resurrection, the praise team need to go on and do something else because there has to be a resurrection in order for us to have power. Uh, I wish I could say this like because that, the word church teaches the whole gospel of Jesus Christ. The fact that he is that he was born of a virgin, that he did live a sinless life, that he did die on the cross, that he did go to a barber tomb, that he did get up early on Sunday morning. Can I go to the old church? And one day pretty soon he's coming again. Because that's what the word church believes. And can I tell you all right here, the word church can never be eliminated. They've been trying to destroy the church for over 2,000 years. But the, earth, the word church can never be eliminated. It will continue to prosper in spite of pandemics. It will, it will continue to advance in spite of the adversity. It will continue to grow in spite of the difficulties that it might face. It will continue to triumph in spite of the criticism. It will continue to minister in spite of some folk leaving. The word church will continue because it is the church of the living God. The word church will not go anywhere because it has been established by God. It has been justified by God, sanctified by God, and soon to be glorified by God. The word church, that's where you ought to want to be a member of, and that's how you ought to look at yourself. I'm a word church. I read the Bible. I study the Bible. I dig into the Bible. I examine the Bible. I love to hear the preacher. I love to hear the teacher, but I want to know it for myself because when trouble comes, I need to be able to handle that trouble because I need to know that God will make a way somehow. But the only way you can get there is you got to be a part of the word church. And watch this. When you're a word church, you don't have to worry about growth. It says because they search the scriptures, because they studied, because they had an open mind, said many of the belief, many of the, the prominent and influential women and men began to believe in Jesus Christ. What is that saying? 
how you live your life outside of the sanctuary, somebody's watching. And because you believe, somebody else is going to believe as well. Praise the Lord. I'm done. I'm done with my little Easter speech. I'm done. Study, study that Berean church when you get a chance. And ask your, uh, that, that if you Google Berean, uh, that, there's this uh, hashtag that's out there that says, be a Berean. Ask yourself, am I a Berean? <laughs> do I listen with an open mind? Or do I listen with a critical spirit? How do I hear the word? When I hear the preacher, do I, do, I, do I say, there he goes again with that same old message? How, how do you receive the word? Be a Berean. But how do you be a Berean? You got to believe in the whole gospel of Jesus Christ. How do you do that? You begin by accepting him as Lord and Savior of your life. That's the starting point. If there's somebody in this room not sure about that themselves and you want to be a part of the church of the living God, amen, and you want to join the church, be a part of the church, not a part of the building, but a part of the church, you can come. You can come. Is there one today? Is there one? Is there one today? Amen. If you're out in virtual virtual land and you want to be a part of the church, amen, put your number in the, in the box. Uh, amen. Get in touch with us one way or the other. Give us a call here at the church. And, of course, we will get in touch with you and lead you in that path of knowing who Jesus is. Amen. God bless you. And God keep you as our prayer. God, we thank you now for what our eyes have seen, our ears have heard today. We thank you for the teaching, reminding us that we can celebrate the church. It's your church. We are your people. We can celebrate the fact that we have relationship with you. And then, God, we want to become that church, that Berean church. We want to become that word church that believes in the whole gospel of the Bible. Bless those who have come today. Thank you for those who have joined us virtually. And thank you for those who have signed on and liked and commented. Manifest yourself in their lives in the days to come. Protect them, watch over them in every appointment, every assignment. Go with them as they travel to and fro. Bless their families, God. Bless them financially. Bless them, God, with prosperity in their lives. Cover them, God, with the blood of Jesus Christ as we dismiss ourselves from this place. We can never leave your presence. Now unto you who are able to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. It's in the name of Jesus that we pray and dismiss ourselves. And the church of the living God says, Amen.